rich families. You have to build things by your own. We didn't have examples in our family. My father was a cleaner in a hospital. So, I mean, I could be, wow. I, could, I could, I could take his job and, and be, you know, and, and, and be satisfied and build a family and that's it. But my ambitions, you know, are totally different than his. In his time, he was fighting to feed a family of 40, 30 yeah. people. Uh, but in my time, he gave me, of course, the, my parents gave me the platform, of course, to develop myself in the Netherlands, and I see the environment, and I believe uh, there is there is something to make out of it. But I've been in, in in that path with a lot of young people like me struggling also at the same time, and at the same time, you know, you you get married, you have kids, and and you see also the struggle that I have at school, that I have somewhere else, and and so many other people are not like us are having less opportunities. Look at Africa. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, look at Morocco, where I, I, I come every month now and I do uh, training in different universities by myself. And it gives me a lot of energy to do that, you know, uh, without, you know, you know, as a volunteer. And I love it because I know where I came from. I know that those things we didn't have those things nobody showed us how to do it and we build it by ourselves but at the same time as i told you i had great mentors that they facilitate a lot of things in you know during that journey that we had and i think we i think i was inspired by that and it's something that i i kept doing my whole life and i still believe in and i think also it's my purpose in life it's not earning money it's not uh building you know building big businesses no it's having an impact on the society uh since uh, some since two years now, I teach at the university uh, business studies in Amsterdam, and uh, and one thing I believe in, I mean, the next coming generation that we are, you know, we are preparing for the uh, business market. I mean, they cannot business be business people without having an impact, impactful mindset. I mean, uh, yes, and this is something I believe in, and if I can show people what my path was and how I can mentor them also to have this mindset you know of course you can make money of course you can make money but do it please with impact not telling me i'm going to do csr and, and take 10 percent of my 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 money i don't know where that money is coming from and i'm going to yeah. charity no it doesn't work you have to include your charity mindset into the business and not the other way around and this is uh, i mean coming back to your question of course and this is what inspired me my background is very important where i came from but at the same time it's just my philosophy of life you cannot i've been an entrepreneur for a lot of people probably i was a very successful entrepreneur when i had 22 consultants i had a fancy car and i had a fancy office i got the yeah. <laughs> uh yeah great but at the same time i believe what i was doing uh, every project that I started myself because the entrepreneurship also gives you the ability to set up your own foundations, set up your own initiatives and pay them yeah. yourself because you believe in that. True. You know, other big guys are doing the same thing by launching their foundations to do, you know, social, you know, social work or to finance social initiatives all over the world. We see that with the climate climate change we see that with uh, with covid we see that with 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 poverty we see that what all is disease actually we see that a lot of organizations are you know bill gates foundations rockefeller foundations and all those foundations all rich people they have somewhere a foundation in the past they had a foundation because they give it to their wife or to their partner yeah yeah busy for a little while and to do some funny things in a in a village and say yeah we are doing some great work but now exactly things are changing and I think I think that's something that that uh, yeah that uh, that I'm happy to see that uh, that that that's evolving. To be honest, yeah, yeah, and and you know, like you you said something very profound that most companies today, and that's why when I I captured the topic, I asked the question: Is it a hit or a miss? The business of saving this planet, because my experience has been that most companies they do this whole sustainability and impact um let's say initiatives as an afterthought so they have this csr budget and maybe some two percent of of net income is put there just to satisfy the the public's you know curiosity you know um but what really changes or what the impact um we are looking for really is having a culture and the paradigm change that runs through the entire organization, right from product development 
to their product launch to have this impactful mindset where are my suppliers getting the raw materials from for example are uh, they using child labor um, to get the raw materials in developing countries you know the entire value chain is critical and from what you are saying i believe that you are looking at you know um a cultural and paradigm shift for corporations to think about impact. So what can a company do? Let's say a company is watching, a big company is watching today's episode. Like what can they do to ensure that the impact driven agenda is not confined to a small CSR initiative? You know, the funny thing about this is uh, when you set up a business, uh, the consumer is the king, you know, and not yes. the companies. That's very important. And then the, since the consumer is, uh, is deciding what we, what, we, what we have to put in, uh, what is normal and what's becoming normal, and green is becoming normal. And, and you see that shifting is already happening through the consumer. And uh, another example also is, uh, you know, uh, you, you all know the Google Glass, right? Yeah. The Google Glass <laughs> uh, was, was, was a, a, a big flop, actually. I mean, it yeah. didn't work. You know why? It you know why? Tell me, tell me why. Tell me. Because the consumer doesn't want it. And and this is the smartest, the Simple. smartest company in the world with the smartest guys with the, with a lot of money. They put a lot of research on it, and they can say, well, yeah, not we we should do it because the consumer doesn't want it. But they push yeah. the idea, and they thought the consumer is stupid, and the consumer is going to buy it. Uh, there are yeah. so many initiatives around us, so many innovations around us that never worked and never seen the light because the consumer is actually the one deciding. So let me give you some few numbers. You know, yes. when the consumer is 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 is, uh, is choosing the green, which becoming a normal thing, um, and, and something that it's similar can be observed on the on on the you know on the cons- on the consumer side and some studies have shown I have some some let me check here I have some some examples almost eighty sure. percent almost eighty percent of the North Americans want to know the origin of the products they buy they mm. want to know so that means if you go to the Walmart or you go to any anywhere they say we want to know what is the origin of the product they buy and sixty nine percent of those consumers would pay premium for brands that provide this information so if the consumer would say i'm not going to buy it so you don't have anything to say as a company yeah that's the end yeah (laughs) okay another thing is is a globally nearly eight in ten eight in ten consumers surveyed say they value sustainability over 70 percent of these uh, respondents would pay an average of 35 more for eco-friendly brands and other studies also paint a similar picture, and they said that 61% of European consumers are concerned mm-hmm. about the state of the environment. In wow. Europe, they are mostly concerned about global warming, which is 50%, and reducing wow. their emissions. So that says a lot about you know the impact of the consumer actually leading the way, and not the other way around. So mm-hmm. a lot of companies they don't have a choice. A lot of companies also, because of the regulations that we have all over the world, you know, the governments are also united. And that makes also a big sense. You know, you saw COP26, COP27 that we're not going to have in Egypt soon. You see that more, more, you know, waves of sustainability in the last 30 years that we had are not interesting anymore. It's becoming yeah. the norm at the moment. And everything points to one thing. is sustainability is here to stay. stay. We don't have a choice. And it's not like, oh, in the past, only, you know, the policymakers and the good guys are doing it. You know, Al Gore made the movie or uh, Roger Moore made the Fahrenheit and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, they are just leaders and it's nice. No, we feel it at the moment and companies understand that they cannot escape this and see the sustainability as more of an opportunity than a threat. 